Welcome to my first ever official vlog. So with the new year comes new goals and this year I've decided to turn those mini little vlogs into proper vlogs and what a better place to start than you guessed it, my syndicate, Frimley Pits. I'm going to get the gear around to the swim now, it looks absolutely bang on, the weather's really mild, there's a full moon coming and I'll keep you posted of how the session goes. So I am now rounding my swim. Like I say, I'm on Frimley Pit 1. I just want to tell you a little bit more about the lake. So the lake itself is around, I don't know, maybe eight or nine acres in size. There's quite a lot of uh, islands and gullies and bays. And there's a nice open water expanse just in front of me, actually, where, I'm cho where I've chosen to fish on this session. Uh, the stock itself is around 50 to 70 carp at present, what I believe, what I've been told. I am only on my first uh, full year's ticket on here, so I am working out myself still as well. Um, out of those 50 to 70 then, I think 10 to 15 from what I've been told go over 30 pound uh, and two have already gone over 40 and we believe that one more is due out and that should go over 40 pound as well. So there's a really nice stock of fish and some of them are really, really old. I think two of the oldest fish on the Frimley complex are in pit one and they're pushing over 60 years old. So it would be mega if we could catch one of them. Right, let's take a look at the water anyway and I'll show you sort of the areas where I'm fishing. So the swim I've chosen to fish is a swim called High Bank and it actually done me my only bite of the winter ticket last year. Uh, so I know that this swim's got winter form and I know it's an area where they like to be. So my uh, my left hand rod is sort of over in the left hand side off the back of a gravel bar. I've got one out in open water fishing directly into the weed and one over to the right where the sort of set of islands are and the channel's going through um, again on a bit of a siltier gully. So that's my swim team and yeah, hopefully we can get a bite. Busy times on the lake now, about six or seven people have uh, come on. It's actually the busiest I've ever seen from the pit one to be honest. Just wow, what an incredible start to 2023. My first night out this year, back up on Frimley Pit 1. The middle rods bust off at first light and I had this 30 pound mirror. Absolutely awesome. So this fish actually fell to a single yellow pineapple and butyric pop-up. Fish with six maggots on the top of it and I just cast it to a likely looking zone where I've seen the fish jump in the past. And yeah, it's paid up the dividends this morning and we've got our reward. Absolutely buzzing. I had my first fish from Frimley last year and it turned into an epic year. So if this year could be anything like that, it'd be absolutely bang on. Right, let's get her back. And a few times. Right, here it is then. The rig that caught me my first fish of 2023. And it's a doubled over stiff hinge rig. So starting with the bait, what I'm using is the 15mm pineapple and butyric pop-ups from Nutribates. I'm topping that with six maggots, three bronze and three red. I'm then down to a size four reeds mere hook and the material I'm using on that little bit of the section there is a 30 pound memory. Then got a small piece of uh, tungsten putty, a small ball of tungsten putty over the knot. That's just to make sure it critically balances down. Then got the ring swivel and then as you will notice, I've got quite a long boom section. This is to compensate the weed that I'm actually casting into as the weed's about a foot and a half long. So what I've done is I've used 35 pound blend coated braid, put another blob of putty in the middle of it and I've got my 50 mil anti tangle sleeve there on the end. And that is it, my finished rig ready to cast out. So guys, I'm back in the van and unfortunately I've had to uh, cut my session short. Um, I had a bit of an upset stomach last night and it's not gone away. So instead of putting myself through it, I'm going to win some brownie points with the wife and I'm going to get myself home a night early. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of bait making this week, so I'll give you a little bit of an insight into that. And uh, yeah, I'll be out on the bank again in the next few weeks and I'll keep you all posted. Well, what a start to the year. A friendly pit one 30 pounder. It was absolutely made up for that session. And as mentioned, I then moved on to doing some bait making at home, which didn't make my wife too happy. Let's take a look at what I put together. Right then, let's have a crack at making some hook baits, because I've nearly ran out of the little orange ones that I used so effectively last year. 
I need to reimburse the pup. Also, my missus isn't in yet, so I need to get them made and get out of here before she uh, comes in. Let's go. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by cracking an egg, putting it into the bowl. I'm just going to whisk the egg up, smashing the yolk into the white. Right, so I've worked it out that one full egg will make you around 100 upgrades. But I want to make two different colours, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to split the egg in half. So the main smell behind my pop up is going to be orange, and we'll add some butyric into it as well. So we'll start by adding the Jaffa oil. I had a generous amount of the Jaffa oil. I think you can add around 24 drops if you wish. Next, I'm going to add some more stimulators. This time, it's the sweet kajousa. I'm going to add a teaspoon of the sweet kajousa into my liquid. The next ingredient is the imbutyric acid. Be careful with this because it is really pungent. You only need to add around four drops of this. Oh, there's five. This is really going to stink the house out. I'm also going to add some emulsifier. This will just stop the oil congealing in the very low temperatures as we are still in winter and I do plan on using these baits immediately. As you can see, all I'm adding is a small level teaspoon of the emulsifier. I'm now going to add my colouring until I get my desired colour, which I want the pop-up to be. I'll now start adding the Polaris until the mix is a consistency that I want. Right, my ball's nearly ready. Here we go, we've massaged it in, and there you have it. Got a ball ready to work with, but what I am going to do is I'm going to wrap it in cling film now, which I'll show you, and then I'm going to put it in the fridge for about an hour. Just firm it up a little bit, and it'll be, make it a little bit easier when you're trying to make your shapes or your pop ups. Right, let's get it in the fridge. Well, here it is, fresh out the fridge, and we're now ready to start making our little boilies. Just got it in the neck off the missus as well because it absolutely stinks. I'm just going to rip off the amount that I want. So my desired amount for however big I want the hook bit. I'm just going to put it in between the hands. Give it a little gentle roll until it becomes like a round shape. You can obviously make these into dumbbells as well or whatever shape you want to make them. Round it off a little bit and there we go. I'm just going to repeat that process now until all the mix is gone. So yeah, let's get cracking with it. I then bring the pan to the boil and add the baits and I'll leave them to simmer for around 60 seconds. Drain the boilies off. And then I'm just going to put the boilies back into the initial mixing bowl itself. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add some more Jaffa oil to the top of them and two more drops of imbutyric acid, but not too much. I'm then going to give them a little bit of a mix round, like so, just to coat the outside of the boiler itself. And then as the boilies dry, they'll pull in all the liquids that I've just put on the top of them. And there we go, they're good to go now. We can just let them set. And there's the second batch of boilies done. Done them in white this time. Just gonna get them boiled up now. That's the second batch ready. I've done the white ones this time. But what I like to do, if I haven't already mentioned, I like to keep adding the liquids as the boilies are drying off. I think this is when the boilies pull in all of the attractants so i'm just going to give it a little bit more of a splash now of the jaffa and a bit more of the sweet um, liquid that i'm putting on them as well i'll just let them soak that in right last thing i need to do in is add them to my wrap bag stick them up in the uh, in the shed and let them air dry out for about three days 
Can't keep them in the house because otherwise I might get thrown out. So following my bait making, I headed back up to Frimley Pit 1 for another 24 hour stint. So let's join me in session now and have a look at how I got on. Well, I'm in. So I'm in a swim called the beach. It is a familiar swim to me. I have fished it a few times and caught fish out of it. And I'll show you the water a little bit more once I'm set up and once the rods are on the dance floor. But yeah, I need to get into my waders now because a few of the spots are off the bar. And uh, yep, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. And relax. Rods are on the dance floor. The home is set up. And that is me. Good for the next 20 hours. Hopefully, we have an eventful night. Well, good morning, um, and I'm a lot more chilled out this morning. As I mentioned yesterday, I was under pressure to get here, and because of the crossing times, uh, I have to leave Portsmouth around quarter to the hour, so it gives me like an hour and 15 minutes to get up here, just in case of any traffic or anything happens on the roads. Um, and I was a bit under the pump yesterday, and I did think at one point, I'm not gonna go up to Frimley, I'll just drop on one of the local club waters, but I decided, you know what, make the effort, get myself up here uh, and give it a crack. So here I am, and yeah, after all the mods got out yesterday, uh, I'm happy I'm here now, uh, and it was worth making the effort. <coughs> Not actually had anything, it's been a very quiet night. Um, I didn't even pick up a liner, it, literally the alarms remained fully motionless all night. Uh, before I went to bed though last night, um, just as we lost light, a fish actually showed, I don't know if it was a carp or a pike, couldn't make my mind up, but a fish moved water um, about 30 yards off my right hand rod and it didn't move the water very quick, it was quite a slow movement of water and it was a, a quite a large amount of water as well really, but then 30 minutes after that, a definite pike moved water in a similar sort of area, so I was a bit, was it a carp, was it a pike, and I couldn't really make my mind up, but uh, it is what it is. From where I'm sat, I can see quite a good amount of the water. On pit one, you're never going to see the whole thing because there's like three or four dotted islands around it. Um, so I've given myself the best opportunity to spot the most water I can and sort of fan my rods out and cover a little bit of ground. And it was, it was actually a good job. I didn't go into the swim that I was in last time because when I waded out onto the bar and actually positioned my rods, uh, a guy stuck his head out of his bivvy in the swim to the right of that. He like literally tucked away in the bushes in a little camo bivvy, uh, and I didn't see him. So uh, if I would, if I had jumped in that swim and started chucking out, he'd, he'd have thought I was alright <laughs> jumping in next to him, considering there's nobody else on the full lake. Uh, so it's panned out for the best, and yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep you posted on how the day goes on. So the position of my rods in. Um, I've decided that I'm going to position the rods off the snags on the islands and I'm also going to fish a rod into the weed. So that's based upon you know the findings that I've had myself. I've caught fish from directly in the weed twice in the winter periods um, and other people obviously catch them against the snags and they do circle around the islands as well. So that's why I've gone in this swim because I can access two different islands fishing against the snags that are coming off them. And I can also access some of the lower lying, like the dying off weed, but it's still got snails inside it. So I found, I made sure I found some weed where the snails still are, and I'm just putting my stiff hinges as singles out onto them spots. Um, and that's all I've done. I've tipped my uh, my 15 mil pineapple and butyric pop ups with six maggots, and that's it. I'm literally fishing them as a single. It's a tactic that's worked for me in the past, and I'm sure it'll continue working for me as well. Um, yeah, I've got confidence in that. I know some people like to fish bags. I'm a bit of a single man and a bag man, you know, it just depends on what's happening uh, at the time and how I feel like the fish are responding to sort of bait and their movements. Yep, 
Right, I'll get going. I'll finish my brew off and I'll keep you posted if anything happens. Well, nothing to show from this session, guys. I'm now in the van, back on the way to work. Um, I am duty today, so I've got to get back in for uh, quarter to eight. Uh, nothing to report from this session. Um, I did see a fish show, so that, that is a mega positive, and it gives you that little vibe and that itch to get back there as soon as you can. So uh, nothing to report this time, but I'll be in touch, and I'm out again this week delivering some grassroots, so we'll see how I get on with that. So in the winter, I like to maximise my time on the bank with the rest of the guys who I fish with and make the most of some socials. So that's exactly what I did next. Headed on a little bit of a work overnighter and I met up with three or four of the boys. Right then, I've just arrived down the lake from the work overnighter and it is one degree. It is absolutely Baltic. I'm going to get the gear out of the van now and then I'll show you a little bit more about the prep that I've put in and the spot that I've chosen to fish and why I'm on this venue. Quick tip for when you're putting out your solid bags with a spoon, what I like to do is take some carpet feed ground bait and just give it a little sprinkle inside of the spoon before putting the solid bag in. I'll just say that if there's any moisture in there, it'll stop it from melting the bag while you're shipping it out. Also, if you get any little splashes in, it'll suck up that moisture and hopefully your bag will stay intact until you get it out to the spot. For the second rod, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna put a washing line over to that far corner. So let's see if I can land this uh, this lead on the bank in between them two sets of trees. First time, here we go. Right then, so first attempt, a little bit over to the right, attempt two, let's go. Take number three. <laughs> if that <laughs> back in the water, I'm not going to be happy. So that's the lead cast over to the far bank. I'm now going to get my rig, take the spoon and get around there. So what I can do now is just attach my blend fluorocarbon D-rig with my little blood liner, as you can see there. That's one of my little homemade orange pop-ups from earlier on in the week as well, with a little ball of maggots on the top. So we've now got the rig attached to the leader. I can now fill up the spoon and get ready to put it onto the spot. So I've now got my rig inside of the, uh, the spoon. I've added my pellet to start with. I'm just going to add another handful of maggots as well into this one. And here we go. Stretch that rig out a little bit and it's time to deploy the spoon. So it's worth mentioning that right now, because my clutch would be set slack across the other side if nobody else was here, as I'm pulling with my right hand, it would just be taking line off the reel as I'm feeding out the spoon with the left hand. So just as I'm doing this with this hand, pushing out with my left hand, keeping all of the line. So at this point, I've got the spoon now nicely in position where, where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep hold of the line itself and set my arm quite high up. And what I'm going to do is just feel the lead go down with my, with my hand. So as soon as I tip the spoon, now, feel the lead travel down onto the bottom. Perfect. Right, so what I'm going to do now, guys, is... Uh, I've got a nice slack leader all the way to my spot and then the line that's running out back towards the rod I'm just going to take a bite in the line I've got the leader side on the left the other side on the right and then hook it into my latch needle and pull it up through the elastic band creating a loop like that once I've got my loop at this stage if I didn't have anybody with me I would have to put a really thick stick in there and pull it down nice and tight to the loop and then run around the bank and go wind the rod in nice and tight, which will then pull the line all out of the water. I would then have to come back around again and swap the big stick for a small, really small, fine little brittle one and just let that settle on top of the, uh, the elastic bands like I'm going to show you now. And that would be a, your washing line system set up. So let's just put it down. Don't know if you can see that on top of there. 
just got a little stick on top of the elastic band. We're just gonna get, get us into winding. Since we've got the assistance on this session, makes life a lot easier. Means you don't have to keep running backwards and forwards. Little bit. Stop. And there we go then, as you can see, it's attached to the bank stick and it's running all the way back up to my swim. So you might be asking yourself the reason, why am I going through all that effort? Why didn't I just cast onto the end of the reeds because I landed it in here anyway? Well this lake is shaped like an ice cream cone and it literally slopes straight off and the middle of the water is 30 foot deep. So if you cast straight over to the opposite bank, you imagine your line layer, it's going to be going all the way through the sort of midsection of the water even the top layer of the water by the time you get there. And on multiple, multiple occasions where we tried doing that before, fish have bumped into the line, we've had vicious liners and they've pulled the lead down the shelf. So it's better to not have any line stretching across the water and it also obviously reduces the line pressure. I can just fish a nice slack leader down to the spot and we're all set ready to go. Hopefully we get a bite tonight before work tomorrow morning. So there's a few factors why we've chosen this venue as our uh, winter choice tonight for our work overnighter. And one of the main reasons is, is actually that you can bivvy up like literally 10 yards apart. You're not fishing locked up. Um, and we can all sort of meet in the central point and still be only be 10, 15 yards from our rods uh, and have a bit of a social and a catch up. Cause I'm down with three of the boys tonight, uh, waiting for another one of them to turn up at the minute. He's, he's on his way from work. And yeah, uh, hopefully um, at least one of us will catch one tonight. It, it does do quite a lot of winter bites and the fish do average sort of 14 to 18 pounds and there is quite a fair few 20s up to sort of high 20s, low 30s in here now. So um, yeah, we'll see how we get on and I'll keep you posted. So we managed to hit it again when the weather was pretty savage and there were no bites forthcoming, but we did manage to have a great catch up and a good little social. So during January, I was actually invited uh, by Graham Maybe, the owner of South Coast Rods, to go down and do a little bit of casting with him and test out the new rods, what they've just brought out. And we had an absolute fantastic afternoon over on Ivy at Chichester Day Syndicate, where we just blasted the rods out for a few hours um, and really flecked some carbon. So let's take a little bit of a look at how we got on doing that. Yes then, it's Friday. So I am actually heading to the lake now, but it's not to go fishing. I'm going down to see Graham and I'm going to be having a little bit of a blast with the new rods, the new South Coast rods. And uh, yeah, see how we get on with them and maybe order myself a little set. Right, I'll let you know how I get on and I'll see you down the lake. So each of the rods, they actually come with a little booklet with them. And inside of the booklet, it actually contains all of the details of the rod. Absolutely wicked, what a little touch that is. Right guys, so we wrapped the rods up at 120 for the first cast. Let's see how we get on. Right, so before we go any further, just to let you know, we've got a four and a half ounce distance lead on, 20 pound mono, and he's a 12 foot rod itself. So we'll see how we get on this cast at 120. Up my hands. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> that hit him bit, up. A bit too hard. <laughs> I think we could bump up from a 120. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my. <laughs> nice to see the clip. Yes. Oh, there we go. It was yes, there, so that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> nice. 160, 12 foot rod with a bit of tape and main line, four and a half hour sled. That's Absolutely bang on. That's not bad on a 12, on a 12 foot rod. 12 foot rods. 12 foot rod, that's uh, that's good. Nice. Yes, we now need to do it again. Two on the balance, so it's luck. <laughs> that's it. Good morning, everyone, and what a lovely winter's morning it is. The sun's shining, it's crisp, it's fresh, but it's absolutely beautiful. Right, I just thought I'd get back on here because I didn't really round up the session that I had with Graham on Friday, casting, and we had an absolute epic time and the rods are brilliant. Um, I, I hit a distance of 160 yards without having to change my technique too much. So I did get some good pointers off Graham and I did learn a lot. 
but I've not changed that whole method of starting forwards, leaning back, and then and then going into the cast. I didn't change it into a full-on distance cast. So to hit 160 yards doing that was absolutely brilliant, and it's what I wanted to achieve because in my fishing, I don't really go over 120 120 yards ever. So if I can hit that distance firm now, I'm sure that when I get back down to my hundreds, hundred and twenties, it'll be even more comfortable. It'll be, it'll be perfect. So yeah, I've just come down to see my mate for a brew. I'm going to get around the bank and go see him. Hopefully he's got the coffees on. And uh, later this week, I'm going to do a work overnighter. So I'll keep you posted on uh, my prep for that and how that gets on. So that brings us towards around the end of January, where I was heading up to the Essex Carp Show, to RV with Ali and the rest of the team. Have you done that curve ring yet? There's Robert, Tyler's nice spinner. Uh, no, nah, mate, it shows your progress, mate. Hey, where's the curve ring? It's been robbed, mate. Where is it? I don't know, mate. It's been five times. It's just no, no, there's no iron team anymore, is it? Like we're already on, guys. We're already on. We're already on. Oh, but he's good. Turn the exposure down. Turn the exposure down. It's teeth of iron. Oh, yeah, he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, boys. Right there, good morning, and welcome to the Essex Carp Show, day two. Any chance to talk? Right then, let's try that again. So the stand is all set up. I'm ready for day number two. There, the boys. There's the stand looking in. Epic. <laughs> <laughs> Fade bundles on offer. Looking good. A couple of rigs in there. Go on then. And the show cap signed by the man himself. Right, here he is then, the main man. It's been 10 years since we stood side by side. And I'd say that we're aging like a fine wine, wouldn't you, mate? I've, you've, I've grown, haven't I? Have I grown up in that 10 years? <laughs> I reckon, I reckon, I reckon I've gained four mil in that time. Yeah. Four mil, I think that's because you've got your shoes back on. <laughs> that's just in the hang of my testicles. Yeah. <laughs> I remember talking to people when we were doing a thinking tackle there. Yeah, we? you were doing a thinking tackle With there. James and Rich. On the zigs on the surface. Yeah. And then this man was there. Now look, fast forward 10 years. And when he's, the stars uh, align. Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, one of our uh, very important team members at One More Cast. So give me a little kiss. Good old boy. Good boy. <laughs> so February for me is a really busy month. There's lots of birthdays in February in the family, including my own. Um, so I couldn't really plan much fishing in. However, I did manage to sneak out for one last overnighter before I headed out to France. So let's take a look at how I got on in that session. Well, I've just turned up on what's going to be my last session of this vlog. And it's got off to an absolute flyer. Take a look down there. Get in, we'll get them out and we'll show you a lot. Right, there they are then. A little winter brace and an hour of turning up for a work overnighter. What a result. And if this is the way that I end my winter vlog, I'll be more than happy. Go on. Well, you join me, bent into yet another fish for this work overnighter. Absolute hectic time. Just down here now, uh, just played it on the back of them reeds there, and he's comfy. Lovely. Pull on them a minute. They've got their winter colours in. Nice that one, isn't it? Yeah. It's not bad for a tent. <laughs> you there you go. Lovely, in the net. Get in there. Wow, look at the size of that leech. That's unbelievable. That's massive. It's like an actual web. Jesus. Well, what a work overnight this has turned out to be. I don't normally get too excited about coin, but I've surfaced this place for a good few years now, and you always see it on the top taking the odd mixer but it's so finicky and it, it rarely gets caught off the surface so to come down fish on the bottom and have him it's one of the very few in the pond that i've not actually caught so yeah another one ticked off i'm gonna slip him back and hopefully one of the other few that are remaining slip up tonight so 
So, although I didn't have anything of any size in that session, I did have a couple of little characters, which was a lovely way to end my winter vlog. You now catch me in session at Talats, as mentioned, on the bank in France, and I may just have had an half decent fish. And you'll have probably already seen that by the time this vlog gets released, so enjoy. But for now, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next instalment.